In the 1970s, Robert Piercig broke onto the scene with his cult philosophy book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. This book set fire to the generation involved in the Vietnam War, probably due to Piercig's idiosyncrasies as a writer, which both felt universal and yet like it were written just for me to read at that time. A beautiful meditation on bridging the gap between two ways of thought, two values, in his philosophy called the metaphysics of quality. This book was something wholly new that both inspired and challenged me in ways not many other pieces of fiction had before. Sure, some things flew over my head, but I definitely caught what he was going for. This was the catalyst for a personal philosophical revolution to 16-year-old me. That may be a bit of hyperbole, but I fell in love with this book. So naturally, I wanted to read his second and final novel, Leela, An Inquiry into Morals. But I knew I needed some more reading on philosophy, so I decided to read Leela the following summer during my holiday as well. And this extra reading, I believe, really helped me because it seemed I better grasp with the philosophy this time, which I must say was much more advanced than before. Now, 17 years after the publication of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, Piersig released a new novel where he ditches the motorcycle and sails the karma down the Hudson River. Like Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, this is basically a philosophical inquiry wrapped inside of a narrative. The, the narrative this time follows a woman who trips into the situation on a boat with the narrator Phaedrus and Richard Weigel whom she is very interested in and has history with. Leela has a certain promiscuous reputation, and this leads to Richard asking Phaedrus early on, does Leela have quality? Which, like the question, what is good, in the original book, haunts Phaedrus. He is seemingly caught off guard in real time by this question, rushing a yes answer, but intellectually he was more than prepared. So the rest of the book, he interrupts his boat voyage with an expansion of the metaphysics of quality that ditches a subject-object split. In Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, he concludes that subjects or objects are preceded by quality, the goodness in the world. But now he ditches that whole dualism in favor of a more complex metaphysical layout, which has dynamic quality and static quality. Dynamic quality is the life of life. The ebb and flow of reality. This changes over time and is nearly impossible to put into words. Then below that is static quality, which can be broken further up into four patterns where we see remains of the subject-object dualism. Static quality is rigid and doesn't change. These patterns are built from the ground up, and society evolves from one to another. At the bottom, we have chaos, which gives way to inorganic patterns, then biological patterns, then social patterns, then finally intellectual patterns, which can be graphed like this. And his argument for morals is not an ethical philosophy, but still a metaphysical one. He says quality is morality and quality is value. They're the same thing. He claims that the higher something is on this tier of evolution, the more moral it is. He says it's more moral to kill a society than to kill an idea. That's really where he's getting at with his metaphysics of quality. So I'd say I'd still probably prefer Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, but this is definitely not a bad sequel for Piercing, the final book he ever wrote.